Y'all, we're making egg loaf. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find, test, and sometimes create the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today we're tackling a recipe that I have never really wanted to make, but you guys have hounded me so much about it that we finally are. Stay tuned for egg loaf. All right guys, egg loaf. <laughs> Just the words kind of make my skin crawl, to be very honest with you. Um, I'm sure it's delicious, but if you've been on this channel any length of time, you know I have a strong aversion to eggy uh, breads, eggy low carb breads. I'm working to try to get the egg flavor and texture out of my keto baked goods, but this is specifically that. It is what many call a French toast substitute. This is a substitute sort of for French toast. Um, in the keto world. So we're gonna do, we're gonna test this. You guys have asked about it repeatedly, so, so here we go. Now before we begin, I wanna give a huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thrive Market is an online marketplace uh, on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. And you can search their entire catalog of thousands of name brand uh, products and organic products uh, by the things that matter to you most, whether that's keto and low carb for us, but it could be raw, it could be vegan, uh, fair trade, non-GMO, whatever it is that means the most to you, you can search their entire catalog of products uh, to find products that fit your values. Now, like a lot of big box discount stores, there is a membership fee to join Thrive Market. Um, I use the one year membership option, which gets it down to like $5 a month. But the good thing is that they, these uh, products are 25 to 50% off regular retail prices. Um, and the nice thing is that for every membership they sell, they give one away to uh, a person in need, a first responder, a teacher, anybody that needs to eat healthy and might not be able to afford a membership. So thank you Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. It's sponsorships like yours that keep channels like mine on the air, especially during crazy times like this. So I wanna thank you for that, all right? Let's make some egg loaves. Come on. I just want to try to give the uh, recipe trail uh, as much as I can. I believe, I think I have this right, that these are based off of the uh, uh, cream cheese pancakes from All Day I Dream About Food and a, um, a blogger and an Instagram user by the name Keto Sam I Am. I'm going to leave links down here below. She basically took that recipe, modified it a little bit about how it was cooked and created something that she baked in a loaf pan or a, or a baking pan and made a fluffy, almost like a quiche looks like. It kind of looks like a souffle, but everybody has gone wild over it and says that it tastes exactly like French toast. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today, but we're, we're testing three of these. There's the main recipe that's got three ingredients, so eggs, cream cheese, and butter. The second variation is by Mama Keto Cooks Real Food, and she had an Instagram account where she added some additional ingredients like coconut flour to make it a little more substantial. Apparently, her Instagram uh, no longer exists. So this website where I'm getting all this is, is KetoCuneNutrition.com, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, it's gonna be spelled out here, and it'll be in the link down below. Um, I, KetoCuneNutrition.com, not sure what that means, but she has a great rundown of where this all originated and all the different variations. And then I, while sitting around and thinking about this, thought of some wonderful savory versions, and we're gonna make one of those just to test them all. So we're making three different recipes today. All right, so our first recipe is the original, which I, like I said, I, I do believe is um, from Keto Sam I Am, uh, the, the Instagram handle. I'm gonna put her down here. I'm going with the original here. So put it in a blender. This is apparently the easiest way to do it. And we're gonna start with, the first ingredient is just all these eggs. So in they go into the blender. And hold on, I hate when eggs drip. We're coming back to this because we're about to do two more of them. To this, we're gonna add uh, our softened cream cheese. And this needs to sit out for a while. Um, this has been sitting out for almost four hours and it is very soft as you can see. So I'm just gonna put this in. If, it, if you have not had time to soften it, throw it in the microwave 30, 45 seconds if it's coming out of the fridge and it'll kind of um, soften that up a little bit. And then to this, we wanna get all of it now, don't waste it. 
To this, we're gonna add our half a stick of butter. And although this has been sitting out for three or four hours, that feels a little firm to me. We're gonna throw our half stick of butter for 10 seconds to just kind of soften this up. Okay, so here is our third and final ingredient, and this is a melted half a stick, four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then this is it, there's no salt. You can, uh, like, okay, the variations say, add some sweetener, put in some erythritol or some stevia or some liquid monk fruit or whatever you wanna do. The whole point of this is it's gonna taste like, um, it's supposed to kinda taste like, uh, um, what's it called, hello? French toast. Gosh, it's been a long day. So it's supposed to taste like French toast. And I guess a lot of people serve this by uh, cooking it in a pan. Once it's done, they'll, they'll crisp it up in a pan, but we're gonna get to that. So, all right, here's our three ingredients. I'm gonna put it in the handy dandy Ninja. And we're gonna just blend the devil out of this and uh, see where we go, all right? Helps you to plug it in. All right. Boom, we're done. <laughs> it's that simple apparently. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I love this Ninja Blender because you can take the blade out and get all your goo and stuff out of there. Whatever you're dealing with, you can get it out of there. Hold on, I need a napkin. Okay, so this is gonna go into a baking pan and there are a couple of three, four, five, seven, ten 10 options you can do. Uh, apparently, um, a lot of people do it in a loaf pan, like a, a loaf of bread. The original, Sam, she says, I do it in an eight by eight pan uh, because it gives it uh, more crust. There's more places for a little nice crispy crust. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can certainly do it with butter. You gotta have something to keep it from sticking because I would imagine it's gonna stick. Um, but I'm just gonna use an avocado oil spray and make sure you get the sides good. And, um, and then we're just gonna bake this at 350 degrees. Uh, for about 30 to 45 minutes. And depending on how long you bake it is the texture it is. The if you bake it less time, it becomes sort of a creamy custardy type situation. If you bake it for a longer time, it comes more bread-like. That's, that's the whole deal with this. So uh, this is pretty liquid. I didn't think it would be that liquidy, but it is. We're coming right back to that because it's the same ingredients for the next one. So, um, this is the original, right? So this is just gonna go into an oven for 30 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna put it in now and we're gonna immediately start on our second recipe uh, because this is such a long bake time. I just wanna try to get them all out of the oven at the same time. So my oven is preheated and ready to go. I'll meet you right back here in one sec. All right, so the second version of this recipe is almost identical. Here are um, eight more eggs. So I'm going through the eggs today, buddy. Um, I'm gonna do this because this is a little easier with a spout on it. So in our eggs go, same amount of cream cheese, same amount of butter. However, get out of the way, get out of the way. Let's melt our butter. All right, so we're gonna add in again another eight ounce block of cream cheese. It's like we said, an ounce of cream cheese for every egg. So the kind of the easy way, to, if you wanted to make half of this and didn't want to do the whole thing, probably what I should have done, um, is just use like four eggs, four ounces of cream cheese, and two tablespoons of butter. But you know me, I follow recipe directions. Uh, I try to follow them as exactly as possible because that's the only fair way to write a recipe. So this wasn't very elegant. I know I usually do a little bit better job of presentation, but it's hard to make this much glop look attractive on screen. <laughs> so hold on. So let's put our butter in. In that goes. And then she adds a couple of things to make this more, I feel like it's probably gonna make it a little more bread-like. And the first of those is coconut flour. And if you wanna know how much coconut flour, go to that website right now that I just taught Keto Keto Nutrition and uh, find Keto Mama Makes Real Foods recipe. So she's going to throw in her coconut flour and she also adds a little bit of baking powder and a little bit of cinnamon. And in fact, her recipe said some cinnamon. So I put a teaspoon. So in that goes. And then she also adds a little bit of vanilla. 
And this is where it's starting to feel maybe more like French toast to me than just eggs swollen up and cooked. I don't know. Let's run this through. Oops, helps you put it on right. Well, Lord Wesley, let's put this on and run it through. Okay, so we're ready to put our second recipe in the oven. And this time I'm gonna use a nine by 13. This is what a lot of people use for this recipe. Gives it time, room to spread out, gives it room to build that crust. Um, and again, I'm just gonna spray it with spray. And I have to say it every time, this is not, my pan is not dirty. This is a purple Pyrex pan, it is not a dirty pan and somebody inevitably in the comments said my pan is dirty <laughs> so again if you're a regular around here you know that that pan ain't dirty it's just purple and then all of this goes in this 9 by 13 mm. now that smells good because it's got that cinnamon in it and that vanilla in it yes ma'am all right I'm gonna throw this in the oven. It, because it's in a thinner pan, probably is gonna cook a little bit less, but it also has more ingredients because it's got the coconut oil in it, uh, coconut flour in it, and it sets about 45 minutes at the same temperature of 350. Putting this in now, I'm gonna clean up and get my blender ready for my next one that I sort of just made up. <laughs> so I'll meet you right back here. All right, so we're back for our third recipe, and this is just something that I sort of made up. As I was sitting here researching this and the whole egg loaf thing, I thought, well, this is a perfect way to make savory things. Everybody knows that famous breakfast casserole that's been served a million times at church and for Christmas morning and all the things that it's like some toast and eggs and sausage and onions and hash browns and you make a, you make a big nine by 13 casserole, breakfast casserole. Well, this kind of feels like a quiche. I mean, a quiche generally has only a little bit of dairy and not an entire block of cream cheese, but I thought, why not? Why can't we do this? So this is my sort of concoction, and this is the first time I've ever made this. We're trying it live on camera. So here we go. We're gonna start again with the eight eggs and the eight ounces of softened cream cheese. All right, to this, we're gonna also add our butter, half a stick of butter. And then we are also gonna add a few flavorings and spices to this. So I chose to do a little bit of garlic powder onion powder, salt, and paprika, and pepper. A half teaspoon of each. And then to that also, a couple of dashes of hot sauce. Sounds good to me. Not much, you're not trying to make it too hot, but a little kick never hurt anybody. I like Louisiana, Tapatio works, Tabasco, whatever you like. So let's get this, let's get this liquefied and we'll be right back. Okay, now right before we go in the pan, let's do, let's add a little bit of uh, cheddar cheese to this because that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of cream cheese in there, but we're gonna add a little cheddar cheese too. So let's just, uh, you don't wanna chew this up too much, but you do wanna mix it in there. So let's get that going for a second. All right, and we're also gonna put this in a nine by 13 casserole pan because like breakfast casserole that I feel like this is gonna be similar to. That's just what you do. But before we do, let's add some other yummy things to it. I'm making a mess, y'all. All right, I know I'm gonna regret using, I ain't got another nine by 13 glass pan. My other one's gonna be too big for this. So I'm gonna use this one and it's dinged up and I, I'm probably gonna regret not putting parchment on this. Spray it good. Also, you could use butter. You just do not want this to stick. So let's pour this in the pan. Make sure you get it all out of there. That um, cheddar cheese we added there at the very end is kind of hanging around the, the bottom and you don't want that. To our little egg mixture here, let's add a few things. The first is gonna be about uh, three quarters of a cup of ground sausage. And this is, I've already browned it in a pan. This is, honestly, this is frozen breakfast sausage uh, from uh, the grocery store. So you could do this with bacon, some pre-cooked 
pre-ground uh, browned bacon. But we're going to do it with sausage because that sounds good. A little bit of green onion. This is a half a cup of diced spring onions. That's the green and the white. And I think we might need to mix this up. And then also a little bit of about a half a cup of thinly diced bell pepper. This is an Aloha pepper. Aren't they pretty? I've never ever, ever heard of an Aloha bell pepper. They're so pretty. And then you could probably put a little extra cheese on top of this, but there are so many options that, that could be done with this um, for the savory version. Uh, think about some leftover rotisserie chicken with a diced jalapeno and some hot sauce. Uh, like I said, bacon with a little bit of uh, sauteed uh, white onion, um, just enough to give it some flavor. There are a lot, a lot of options that I can think of where it would be fantastic with this. So we're going to find out. I might regret, like I said, baking it in this metal pan, but in this is going to go. I'm going to put it right in the oven, slide it in with the others, and we're going to come back and we're going to taste all of these. And I'm going to let you know my opinion of the infamous keto egg loaf. Stay tuned. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. I mean, it is, it, I've, it's been out for probably 20 seconds. I had to turn the front camera on because this guy was so beautiful above the edge. He's firm. Fat is beautiful. Now, you know, it's going to fall. That's the whole point of this egg loaf. It's going to fall and collapse in a little bit of itself. This was in for 40 minutes. Uh, some people sprinkle some cinnamon on top, and if you look at their videos or photos, it looks like it's really browned on the top, but I think that is the cinnamon that they've sprinkled on top, but this looks gorgeous. Our uh, second one is about to come out soon because it was about 10 minutes behind the other one, and then the Big Daddy with the savory, he is coming out shortly after. I think he's got about 20 minutes left on the timer, so I'll meet you back here. I just wanted to show it to you because it's so pretty. Okay, guys, here is our second option and there's a not as much rise but it's obviously a much larger pan this is a 9 by 13 instead of an 8 by 8 this is the one with coconut flour and it got a little browner on top uh, this has been in for about 35 minutes maybe 40 minutes at 350 and i'm just going to place this here um whew, they're so hot they are all so hot, but they're so beautiful. And again, these are going to deflate. Now, as you can see, I've got some um, humps and mounds. I don't know if you can really get a, see how this kind of hump and a mound there. Um, I have calibrated my oven. My oven is to temperature, but it has a lot of hot spots. Um, and it also is not level. And I'm tried, trying to level it. This is not, this is a temporary uh, kitchen that I'm in now. So you work with what you got. So, all right, waiting for the third one. We'll be right back. All right, my beautiful guys and gals. Here's our third option. The one I just sort of made up on camera with our onions and peppers. And <laughs> that looks gorgeous. Now, um, it took about 35 minutes in the oven. This was almost 40 because it was thicker. 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 35 minutes and a metal pan is not ideal here um but you make do with what you got during a pandemic so <laughs> no pun intended anyway all right these are scorching hot they have got to cool for just a second before i come at these but i'm excited about it and i will meet you back here in five four three two one so our first guy is this um this one here it did stick a little bit now, I'm tempted to just come at this with a spoon and spoon it out of there, but apparently you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to cut it into slices. And your nutrition, nutritional value, I will leave in the description below because you should be, you know, it depends on what brand of cream cheese you're using. Well, I mean, eggs only have about 0.4 to 0.6 carbs per, um, per egg. This is harder to get out of here than I thought. Hold on, I need a smaller spatula. Okay, so let's come at this and see if I can pull this out of here without making too much of a mess. Well, that's pretty. You see what the bottom kind of looks like there. It did stick a little bit. I probably, if I do this again, will use butter instead of my um, avocado oil spray. Uh, that's the original, has no sweeteners. No, I bet you can't even see it. I had my head in the way. 
Um, that's the original, has no sweeteners and no um, flavorings. This is the coconut flower version. It's the now defunct Instagram channel of that developer who added six tablespoons of coconut flour. It's hard to get out of there. They are stuck. Hold on. And they're so hot I can't touch them. Oh. I mean, that kind of looks like bread, y'all. Um, let me hide my head and Polly Holiday's head behind me, Flo, so you can maybe it'll focus on it. But that looks kind of breadish. And this is the one that has the cinnamon in it, okay? This is the savory one that I just sort of concocted out of thin air. And he's thinner because he had to carry a lot of other things. There was a lot of fat. There was a lot of cheese in that. And it is so hot. It is crazy hot. So I'm going to put this away for just a second. Let's taste our others as they came out. Original egg loaf. You can see the consistency kind of jiggly. Let me come at it. You know how I feel about keto eggy breads. Okay. Tastes like scrambled eggs baked in a pan. Tastes like scrambled eggs baked in a pan. I can see where if you put this in a skillet and then poured syrup over the top, a lot of people use a low, um, like a, a sugar-free syrup on top, it becomes very much like French toast. It's really good. All right, now our second one is the one that we had six, you see that? Six tablespoons of coconut flour, you had baking powder. And I can see where people would say, slice this up and put it in a skillet with some butter and pour some syrup over it and you're gonna have something good. There was no sweetener to this. A lot of people do add sweetener. Do you? Do you make egg loaf and add sweetener? Neither of these recipes called for it, so I made them as they were written. This is the second one. Hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. With the vanilla and the cinnamon, that feels more like French toast. Definitely bready texture. That's good. All right, now we're back for the third one. I'm more excited about this one. Um, again, it did not rise nearly as much as the others because it's carrying some cheese and some weighty ingredients like Flo, get out of the way, some sausage and some other things. But... Um, as someone who is generally, even back in the old days of standard eating, non-low carb eating, I was never really a French toast fan. That was not something that I ever craved or wanted. I would much rather go for savory goods. So this excites me more. This has got sausage, like I said, peppers, onions, cheddar, hot sauce. It's hot. You see it smoking? Mm-hmm. That's mine. Of these three, mmm. As someone who has never been geared toward sweet breakfasts, this is way much more down my alley. It's a crustless quiche. That's really what all of these are. Kind of. And this one just rings my bell. I'm fine. Mm. There you have it, folks. Low carb egg loaf. I see why it's popular. I was skeptical, but I do believe that you guys have won me over. Thank you so much for coming along. As I say all the time here, these videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. And looking in the end of that camera every week or two or as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together. 
As I mentioned, follow me on Instagram. I do a lot there. I check out my Facebook page. There's more to my um, channel than just the YouTube channel. Uh, but I also want to give a huge thank you to my sponsor, Thrive Market, for sponsoring this. Again, without sponsorships like yours, channels like mine could not survive, especially during times like these. They're a membership-only healthy foods market, online marketplace. Uh, they've got multiple um, options from a one month up to a full year membership that's only like five bucks a month. And the prices are 25 to 50% off retail prices. Thank you, Thrive Market. Be sure to use the link down below to sign up. Uh, if you want to support me, please go and support them. You'll see in all the comment sections of my Thrive Market videos, you'll see teachers, you'll see policemen uh, um, and, and firemen and other people who say, I received a free membership. So I know that their give back program is doing a lot of good in the world. And they're also doing great things for me and my kitchen here. So otherwise, I will see you guys soon. Be sure to check out my Patreon account. I'm gonna put all my Patreon sponsors here on the screen. If you don't know what Patreon is, I've always called it the tip jar for the internet. It allows people like you who enjoy what people like me are doing here on YouTube. And you can give a dollar or two a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks as it were. And those people definitely are one of the reasons I'm still here doing this. So I wanna thank you all so very much. All right, I'll see you very soon. I love you guys. Bye-bye.